Are we together? And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. When you want to go from one place to the other, if you have a boat or a camel or a donkey, you use it. But in this case, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and another rule was created to him. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Keep learning the laws of the kingdom. Keep learning the laws of life. But don't be surprised when an invisible hand picks you and moves you beyond the natural sequence of things. I believe this. I believe in diligence. I will always teach diligence. Are we together? But, like I would always share, there are times that your boat is fine. There are times your fishing net is fine. Oh, Peter, there are times you are in the sea, but you will still not catch fish. That is not an issue of laziness. The fish didn't come. It's no longer your fault. At that point, you don't need skills again. You need the one who created the fish to gravitate them towards you and say, cast your net to its right side. And in a moment, you will catch fish that your boat will begin to sink. But there is a grace that can come upon you and can compel all and sundry to come and see what Jesus is doing. This one is not charm. This one is not um, whatever it is. It is the hand of God. Find out what was on Jesus that made 5,000 people to climb a mountain with him and stay there. Must I climb a mountain to hear him? He can pass through your finances. He can pass through your marriage. He can pass through the life of your children. He can pass through your spiritual life. He can pass through your destiny. He can pass through a church. He can pass through a ministry. He can pass through the life of a man of God. You know it is him because something must be stolen. Something must seem to die. Something must seem to be destroyed. Someone shout no way. Shout it again. Say no way. Because for some of you, before now, you've not seen the necessity for the anointing. And Satan keeps camping you around that mindset and say, are you an apostle? No. Are you a prophet? No. Are you not just a businessman? Don't mind them. He's cheating you. Let me just advise you right now. Especially because of these end times. The condition for being anointed is that you are alive. The moment you are alive, just know that Satan will come to you. If he has not come, the messengers are on their way. But through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves let me prophesy to someone that any force that has refused to let you go in the name of jesus and by the power that raised christ from the dead he must give up on you finally please sit down hear me your business will not just grow uh -uh. your children will not just be responsible people the ministry will not just grow your political career will not just flourish there is a devil who is determined to make sure everything god in your life dies are we together it will tear your relationship between you and your wife tear your relationship between you and your children destroy your finances until he reduces you to ashes mess up your ministry until you become a testimony of pain and shame satan for you when he does it he will sign it like julius berger will build and write signed everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen What makes you believe Satan will fold his arms and watch you promoted? You think he does not know what your influence will do to the kingdom? Man of God, what makes you believe that Satan will sit down and allow you to continue to be a rising voice? You think he does not know what your voice will do to your territory? Hmm. Oh, Zechariah and Elizabeth. It's not about barrenness. It's about John. Who will anoint Jesus. There are many battles today. 
that many of you are fighting that has nothing to do with you it is because of something that will come out from you listen when you see satan fighting your family what is what is finance does he eat naira and cobble and dollars he knows that with that empowerment you will send your son to a mission school and in that mission school one day a prophet or apostle will visit that school he will have an encounter and he will find his purpose and become a mighty man of god so he will make sure that school fees never enters your hand help that woman please i can tell you firsthand every time you see the devil around your life he's not there to advise you he's not there to counsel you he's there to steal to kill and to destroy help that lady please listen can i be honest with you i have seen many demon spirits in my life i'm not telling you what i just read in scripture if you ever see men excelling in spite of satan something is keeping him you don't want listen to me for thousands of years of satan as a defeated foe he has still not given up on fighting God. You have to understand the person you are dealing with. You will think after the millions of years of his rebellion, he should just give up one day. Satan is as determined today as he was when he left heaven. What kind of a creature is that? Even some of the capons, some of the armed robbers, some of the terrorists, they got to a point where they were broken like children. Have you ever seen Satan repenting? Have you ever seen his picture on his knees saying god just punish me but i'm ready for peace most people do not know the person they are dealing with if you think oppressing you for 30 years will make satan say it's enough think again apostle he has tied down my ministry for five years one day go better satan go and read your bible a man who was thrown from heaven and after millions of years he is still determined to thwart the purposes of god is there is anything to learn from satan is determination can i tell you you were born in the middle of an old story that has nothing to do with you but simply because you found yourself in that space called the earth you better find out the rules of engagement otherwise you will find out that your life will become a casualty that you know nothing about i remember years ago a gentleman true story the moment he became 13 someone slapped him in his dream 13 years and when he came and met me and he was talking you know a little boy was in one of the schools then in zaria and all of that and he came those times i used to just see them and he was telling me that somebody slapped him do you know true story when he was talking to his father the father said describe who slapped you and that was exactly what happened to the father i don't know if it was around that time but at least as a teenager you know what the spirit was saying welcome to a battle that your being part of this bloodline has forced you you must be interested in what we are dealing with are we together yes. why do we need the anointing because there is a real devil there are real spirits mother the devil will not fold his arms and watch your five ten eight children rise up to become responsible people no his joy is to steal to kill and to destroy you would think if you start crying once satan will pity you find out who he is there are people crying in hell if he's to pity anybody he will start with them not you I don't know about you but for me i've made up my mind as a covenant with god i have no negotiation with satan there are no discussions every time me and he meet he already knows i'm saying this because some of you have allowed the devil lie to you you are a woman don't get into these spiritual things 
some of you you are a man some of you you are not a prayer warrior you don't let the devil keep deceiving you and destroy your life let me tell you this see when satan wants to destroy a family his first target is the strongest person spiritually i'm giving you spiritual intelligence he is not stupid he will afflict with sickness he will afflict with pain he will afflict with frustration so that when you go down spiritually that hindrance has cleared the way he will now settle down and attack someone blast in the spirit in one minute not my destiny in the name of jesus help those under the anointing in jesus name please sit down let me tell you something please listen to me listen to me listen to me i will not go ahead of myself there is a separate series on deliverance that one will announce it and i will settle down and teach you but can I tell you this? I don't mean to scare you, but Africa, listen to me. If you are a firstborn, listen to me. If you are a first male, listen to me. If you are a last child, listen to me. If you are a breadwinner, listen to me. If you are the one who lifts up the head of your family, listen to me. Satan, he attacks, but there is a protocol to the attack. so much ignorance in the body of christ listen please look up look up i want you to pay attention don't you think i'm wasting your time if you are the first to be educated the first for your head to be lifted in your family the first go and read the bible about the laws firstborns not just the first to come out of the womb the first to do anything in life do you know why because the first of anything is the seed and the pattern the first to open a door for a family is the first to create the pattern the first to break out of poverty you think the devil will fold his arms and watch you the first man of god from your village the first man of god from your family the first professor the first married man the first married woman Praise God. Please sit down. Let me try to organize myself this night. Just help those under the anointing. I tell you, God is doing many things as I'm speaking. You came to church. This is Koinonia. No waste of your time at all. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me let me tell you one of the ways that satan moves is called the power of patterns you know what patterns are patterns are repetitive occurrences you find out god forbid don't feel bad your grandmother was raped your mother was raped your daughter was raped they never shared it with themselves yet the pattern will find itself again somebody spent 10 years in america returned back to nigeria like an arm robber another person spent 10 years in us or in in in, in, in um, london returned back all those things are patterns let me tell you what patterns are patterns are sponsored by altars even if the initiators of the altars go the altars are still valid they will speak 
that is the reason why you see nations go through patterns regions go through patterns individuals go through patterns families go through patterns even ministries go through patterns the anointing is not for preachers not the end time anointing the anointing is not just for men of god the anointing is not just for adults help that person please i have seen wickedness in the lives of people i have seen satan dis destabilize the joy and the peace of families i've seen great men of god with potentials to do things for the kingdom but satan just brought them down i've seen business people who would have been the crown of their regions can i tell you the truth believe me when i tell you satan is not a friend learn from his rebellion and his unbendedness satan has never told god sorry he will never tell man sorry just believe that about him so when satan comes around your life and acts like a friend beware of what you are playing with you are not just playing with fire satan is every other thing but he's not stupid and he's not foolish he has an advantage of age and he's using it well
there is a grace listen to me brothers and sisters i see angelic activities here literally i'm not joking i'm seeing just the angels of the lord walking this is what is causing some of these things you are seeing it's not only them i'm seeing it move from row to row front to the back outside you don't have to stand i'm seeing just like angels doing bringing things out and bringing things in this is what the lord is showing me the bible says when you come to mount zion there are many things that happen there are an innumerable company of angels remember i told you yesterday that if you have this thing you have it if you don't have it you don't have it there are no assumptions no assumptions in the spirit because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness the bible says therefore god even thy god had given you an oil of gladness and the assignment of that oil is to make you above your fellows it's a grace for influence it will cause any territory to hear your voice these things are graces so in the next few minutes forgive me i know that we've taken a bit of time but i'm going to give you five minutes to cry before the god of heaven you will know the specific dimensions you are in ministry you are praying for your family think about your children while you pray and let it be from the depth of your heart father this is the moment where i receive this engracing is someone praying lift your voice those online make sure you participate in the prayer from the depth of your hunger Talk to the God of your salvation. Please pray. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. This is the place where my life is changed. Visit me, O oh God. Turn my life around. Let me become another man. The overflow, shall you pray? Pray from the depth of your heart.
Karato Sala Parusia. Make sure you are praying. You are not wasting your time in this morning service. One last prayer. Every dimension of grace that your heart pans for, I'd like you to cry it in prayer. And say, Father, if these graces are available for the sake of your kingdom, for the efficiency of the work you have committed in my hands, I open up my spirit and to draw and receive. Lift your voice and pray. Immersed in his presence, someone's destiny is changing. This is an encounter you will never forget. how men are made in this kingdom this is how champions arise in this kingdom in the name of Jesus I want to release the grace for the prophetic in this place there are men and women there needs to be an accelerated rise 
of authentic prophetic voices within this city men with balance and love and power and accuracy and in the name of jesus inside and outside i stand by the privilege of the election of grace and i pray spirit of the living god there are men and women in this season of revival that you are igniting with the fire of the prophetic lord wherever they are online and in this place as this eagle moves across in this womb i pray in the name of jesus the christ of god let the spirit of prophecy rest upon them right now at the count of three in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you one two three take that grace take that grace help them take that grace i ignite it in the name of jesus spring up all wells prophetic wells shila kataba as i hear the word of the lord may your gates be open to that ministry of the prophetic by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit the seeing eye the hearing ear i release upon you the seeing eye the hearing ear i release upon you to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea there is a grace for massive deliverance that is coming upon someone that's why i began to sing that song Listen, when you receive this grace, that anyone that is under siege, who comes under your spiritual circumference, except God is not God, that that power will be broken from their life. I pray for you. Lord, I don't know where they are, but I'm hearing the number 34. In the name of Jesus, inside and outside, at the count of three, may that fire come upon you to set the captives free. What? Two, three, take that grace. Take that grace. Sheleka parata. Marike saliataba. That your mouth becomes a sword in the realm of the spirit. Piercing through the darkness. Sheleke te baraladia. Tela karadosa ziada katabala. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. The unction that was on Esther that gave her a standing with the king, that anointing is coming on someone, is a grace that will set you up in the palaces of destiny. Take that grace now. Take Kaparata. 
Branches cover it. Help her, help her. Help that lady. Hold her, please. So she doesn't enjoy herself. There is no study of her. There is a God who sets up princes and puts them in positions of royalty. Help us, lady, please. Hello, in Madonna. Hey! Let me impart the grace for prayer upon you. A prayerless people is truly a powerless people. I'm not talking of need-driven prayer. I'm talking of men who have mastered the protocol of the altar. That the grace can come upon your spirit man. The grace that will cause you to pray. The quickening of the spirit that empowers you to call upon his name. I know by the spirit that the prayer altar of many people is down. It's true. I see it already. But I pray for you. The fire. Zike Baruta Shalakata. The fire that must land upon your life. Giving you the grace to pray. He spake a parable. To the end that men ought always to pray and not to say. At the count of three. I pray for you. Asaba. I pray for you. Body of Christ. The grace for prayer. Let it rest upon you right now. The spirit of prayer and supplication. The grace to travel in the secret place. The grace to fast. The grace to pray. Take that grace now. Take that fire now. My glory. Lift her up of mine. You're my glory. You're the lifter up of mine. I want to release. You don't have to bring them out again. I think here it's already crowded. So wherever they are, just guide them there. But please, this prayer I'm about to pray. Be an usher. Whether or not there are ushers walking, there's only so much they can do. There is the grace for speed. It's true. Listen, many of us are already in a position of disadvantage. Either by reason of age, or by reason of slowness in understanding. Or by reason of the timing of your giving your life to Christ. There needs to be an agency in the spirit that can give you acceleration in life. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. I want to release that grace. There are businesses and there are destinies that at the rate you are moving you may not be able to do much for the kingdom. I'm saying hold them because People will start running by the Spirit. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. We are limited here. In the name of Jesus, the grace that has brought speed to men and destinies, taking men from positions of obscurity, sometimes overnight, as I hear me, by the rod of a higher priesthood, I release that grace upon you now. Speed, speed, speed to your destiny. Speed to your destiny. I command speed. No more delay. No more delay. Ten years in one year. Spiritual speed. Financial speed. Intellectual speed. Ministerial speed. Parakatos Koparita. Hallelujah. 
Anyone here called barren, whether for you or for your loved ones, you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I stand by the God of heaven and I speak to you. According to the time of life, by this time next year, you are carrying your children. Help them please. By this time next year, you are carrying your children. Let me pray for the sick. Please lay your hands. We have but a few minutes. Lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just touch your chest. You are the covenant keeping. Lay your hands here. Now I like you to believe as I pray and agree with me in the name of Jesus. 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 Right now I rebuke every devil of infirmity. The spirit at the back of the illnesses, the diseases of God's people, I declare be gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak to your body from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet. Be healed now. Be healed now. Every growth in your body, every lump around your body, it disappears now. Every faulty blood condition wrong genotype change now in the name of jesus please believe what you are hearing lump breast lump be healed now be healed now conditions in the chest the lord is healing it right now in the name of jesus Anyone here with partial or total deafness, I command that ear to be opened now. Every blind eye, partially or totally, be opened now in the name of Jesus. Every bone condition, in the name of Jesus, I bring the life and the power of the Spirit. Be made whole now. There's someone being healed of pile, severe pile. The power of God is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord is showing me a lady. You are not pregnant, but I see that once and again it's like you are lactating. But it's not like you are pregnant carrying a child. In the name of Jesus, that occurrence comes to an end over your life now. Two weeks ago, you saw me in your dream and you saw me ministering to you. In the name of Jesus, I minister in the physical as you saw. And the impartation that you receive, may my God confirm it now. The impartation we receive, may my God confirm it now. I give the chains only. I give the chains for Please help. Back, back, 
you have a challenge with your back very severe pain around your spine area right now the power of god is touching you i rebuke that pain right now in the name of jesus there is a lady here you have dreams and in that dream you see yourself as a man in the name of jesus christ the lord is revealing this to me i declare that every spirit that wants to exchange your destiny i curse that spirit now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ hotness hotness around your body severe heat around your body i declare you are free right now you are free right now now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus i speak to you and by the anointing of the holy spirit be healed and anyone here under any kind of demonic siege holding your life holding your destiny holding everything that belongs to you i stand in agreement with your bishop and your father and i declare by the spirit of god that it leaves you now forever everything in your life that god has begun and the devil has vowed that it will never be completed god is alpha but he's also omega so if he started there is a finisher's anointing i pray for you every project and everything you are involved with whether it's your academics whatever it is that he that begun this good work that is faithful to bring it to completion may the finisher's anointing rest upon you now please believe anyone here trusting god for a job or any family here that there has been a siege of joblessness shabarakas kobada embregedebaruta silekata let that siege be broken now i want to rebuke the plague of death if there is death over anybody's head that you will not finish this year and they will say survive by i stand by my god and i declare whoever does that thing may they fall into it and anyone that says over his dead body for you and your family to rise may that prayer be answered now Can I pray for your finances? I know that the pandemic has brought a lot of economic turmoil to the nations. Restoration is in the office of the prophetic according to scripture. He said by this time tomorrow. Believe in the Lord your God he says. You have your businesses, your career and whatever you do in exchange, your value that you give. And that is wonderful continue to be diligent the bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat there is honor in diligence but then in addition to your diligence there is always the backing of the spirit and i want to pray for you and i want you to believe listen can i tell you this believe me when i tell you it does not take time for god to lift men it's just the understanding of people you can remain in a position forever whereas with the sincerity of your heart being open with one prophetic word god can not only locate you but settle you let me pray for anyone interested here i give you three months from today i stand in the name of jesus i call upon my god who is the helper of men within three months in the name of jesus may my god settle your finances believe it don't doubt believe it don't doubt
believe is shown down in the name of Jesus. I say it again, Ataba. I bring you the word of prophecy. I bring you the word of the Lord. I shift systems and structures. And I declare, may my God help you. Hear me. And for all of you who have lost money, you lost money in businesses, you lost opportunities, and right now you're wondering, how will I finish this year? For some of you, December 31st will not reach without you sharing your testimony. I mean what I'm saying. Let it be yours in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here due for promotion and your promotion is good for the kingdom and is good for the advancement of the purposes of God but the devil for some reason is insisting that you are kept down. I prophesy to you whoever is sitting on what is yours I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn until it gets to your turn. Please believe these are not empty words. These are not a preacher shouting. This is creation happening over your destiny. I know we are not in a minister's conference yet, but I'm aware that there are other servants of God here. I pray for you and the work that God has given you. Whatever has vowed that your work will not grow, I stand by the God of heaven. Because everything that is alive grows. Therefore, I speak to the work given to you. Grow to a new level. Yeah. Hear me? There is a cause that I want to break now. We are rounding up. There is a wicked spirit in Africa that does not allow everybody within a family rise. It's only one person that will rise and the rest will keep putting pressure on him and his family. It's a wicked spirit. Anyone here under the sound of my voice that the devil wants to make you have to wait for someone before you eat. In the name of Jesus, I cast that spirit. I cast that altar. I cast that spirit. I cast that altar. Hallelujah. Someone is praying and say, Apostle, pray for me. I need direction in my life. I'm confused right now. Should I remain in Asaba? Should I go abroad? Listen, divine location is important for your success. It's a dangerous thing to be where God has not assigned for you. There are people today when the devil wants to bless them, he will give them a seeming breakthrough out of the placement of God. You need to know where God wants you to be part time. Just because God wanted you there yesterday does not mean He still wants you there today. This is a prophetic word for someone or for a family. I pray for you. Whatever it takes for God to reveal to you where He wants you to be, whether it's a dream, whether it's a vision, whether it's the prophetic, I pray, receive supernatural direction now. For the next level of your life, receive supernatural direction. For the next level of your life, receive supernatural direction. Listen, please don't joke with what I just prayed. When you go back home, pray it. Many of us, the reason why we are not rising. It's not because God is not with us. It's because we are not in our divinely ordained place. And Isaac sowed in that land, Bishop, and received that same year. Geography is important as far as seasons are concerned in our lives. Jesus knew when it was time to go to the other side. He knew when it was time to return back to Nazareth. He knew when it was time to go to Jericho. Divine placement. Two more prayer points. There are people here saying, Apostle, I don't know what my life is about. I just keep escorting others in destiny. 
Has God called me to ministry? Has God called me to career? Has God called me to help and uphold the hands of others in ministry? I need to pray for you. Listen, living a wasted life is a terrible thing. That the only thing growing in your life is your age. You are just growing older, but there is nothing constructive that you are spending your destiny on. And by this prayer, I want to also use the opportunity and kill the spirit of irresponsibility that is in the life of many young people. I say this respectfully, but there are many people for you. God is said, hey, wake up. Wake up to a life of responsibility. No chasing around, loitering from morning till night, wasting your destiny for nothing. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the power of vision, the grace for vision, to know what your destiny is about and to stay true and focus on it. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Now listen to the last prayer point. For some of you, you have truly paid your price. You have worked on yourself. But the grace to give you visibility. You see that? If it's in ministry, sincerely, there are some of you with all humility, you have worked on yourself. You've worked on character. You've worked on your word content. You've worked on your prayer life, on leadership. It's just for that grace to announce you. You write books and nobody is there to read. You organize conferences. Nobody is placing a demand on that grace. You pay your price to build a shop or a mall. And nobody comes. Listen, it's one thing to be called. But like a tree, your joy is when people discern what God is doing. And come to honor the workings of the Spirit in your life. There is a grace that gives visibility. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. There is a season in every man's life called the season of appearing. And Isaiah 61 says to appoint unto them that morning in Zion. You can set a date for their rising. Let me speak to as many here who have truly paid their price in the secret. In prayer, in fasting, you have built yourself. Some of you, you are ready to see the king. You have done your assignment under the custody of Haggai. I declare by the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, the angels that announce man, the grace that announce man, may that grace come upon your life, come upon your ministry, come upon your business, come upon your family, come upon your career, come upon your destiny. In the name of Jesus, Finally, let me pray for the members of this church. Now, I've prayed for everyone sincerely, and I love you. But there are men and women who have sacrificed their resources. When Bishop was sharing with me some of the sacrifices, and I was even broken when I was told some of you who are not even members of this church, you came and said, look, it's not about church. And you put your hand together. This is the spirit of the body of Christ. I salute all who have done that. But I need to pray for the tireless men and women in this assembly, whether those who are here or those who are connected to this spiritual family, who have labored in ways great and small to see that this conference is a success. I have to pray for you. My Bible says a worker is worthy, deserving of his wages. In the name of Jesus. All who are under the grace and the leadership of our precious bishop and his wife. I join faith with him and I bless you. You are blessed and you cannot be caused. I declare for all of your givings, all of your sacrifices, and that which you have done, the eye of God that has seen it, that same eye will direct rewards and favor towards you. You will not create a platform for the lifting of others and go down. In the name of Jesus. For as many of you who have labored to invite people going around the city to announce glad tidings. Because of you today, people have been healed, delivered and blessed. 
I pray for you in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God rise to a new dimension may my God surprise you he will take away shame and reproach from your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hallelujah by the grace of God I know that our bishop will come back to say by his grace I'm still around God has granted grace we have um, not not here again but we have um, additional conferences this evening uh, even though that is limited I'm, I'm sorry I think it's, it's, it's a restricted conference but then for some of you this may be our last encounter for now and for this year in the name of Jesus everything you desire that I didn't speak about I declare to you by the Spirit of God let it become yours and whatever you have seen in the life of your bishop God's servant that you desire I join my faith with him I release it to your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ all by the anointing all by the anointing so we need the anointing to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the kingdom of God look up please let me tell you this if the average believer is ever aware at the schemings of darkness over your life that alone will motivate you to take God seriously I think that because of now I don't mean to insult technology and our you know secular living I have profound respect for it but I think most believers have been blinded at the reality if a legion of demons were in one man one there are only about maybe six to eight billion people as we know today now on earth roughly speaking that is child's play relative to the number of demons and spiritual forces that are on earth that is what child's play that means there are enough spirits to be assigned per destiny Satan has not hidden his hatred for anything God, including you. So, when you stood to give your life to Christ, you are not the only one that witnessed your salvation. The gates of darkness saw this. So, finally, this family now has one person who has stood to say, I am for Jesus. And not only me. When you were praying with your wife and saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It was not only you in that room. And it was not angels alone. The realm of the spirit was watching your prayer. And they were hearing your confession. And they said, alright, you have drawn the line. And we walked carelessly. Just believing that in some way, my life, I will excel just like that. When Jesus finished fasting, the first person he saw was not an angel. The first person he saw was Satan. Satan left the whole world and was waiting patiently for 40 days. There are some fastings that don't just drive demons. It makes them to say what is happening in Asaba. We, we, there is a signal, an unusual angelic activities happening somewhere in Asaba. Who is that person burning the incense of prayer? It's not everything that just drives demons. There are things that call them. Your giving, your sacrifice. The realm of the spirit is responding. And they want to come and find out who is this. And they say it's a pastor. Pastor? They check the archives in the spirit. We've not had the mention of pastor in this family. Where is this coming from? It's coming from a young man who has covenanted with God that he will be a liberator of his family. And he says, draw the line. Whatever it will take, whether it's an accident, whether it's a destruction, he said, whatever it will, to, to, you know, all those kinds of things. And then scheme it to destroy him. Ah! But in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I say it again, that every force sitting on anyone's destiny, I'm not motivating you. I stand by the God who called me. And I declare in the name of Jesus that their power is broken over your life. Broken over. Help them, please. Help that lady. Broken over your family. Please help them. In the name of Jesus, I set on fire everything that is not of the 
Christ. I destroy every yoke. I stand by the God of heaven. And through the voice of prophecy, I arrest every spirit. I arrest every ordinance speaking against you. Please sit down. Fila sala paruza siya katabaranda katosia. Shkatabala katosiata. Just pray in the spirit in one minute where you are seated. Shkatabaraka zide bala hasabia. Fire is burning in this place. Shkembaratas kedale shabaruta ziata. Enough is enough. It's time for destinies to shift. It's time for lives to change. It's time for that which was spoken concerning your life. Man of God, are you praying? Enough is enough. It's time to see the power, the grace and the glory of God. It's time for that which was written concerning me to speak. Are there men of prayer in Asaba? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down and be sensitive. Please give me volume, Elijah. Number two, why do you need the anointing? Mm. To fulfill your divine assignment and advance the kingdom of God. The second reason why you need the anointing is to fulfill your divine assignment. Hear me. Thank God for skill. Thank God for your abilities. Thank God for your human potentials. But in this kingdom, human potentials can only take us so far. You cannot do kingdom assignments ultimately in the strength of the flesh. You will need an empowerment from heaven. Are we blessed? Yes. You cannot heal the sick set the captives free fulfill your god-given assignment just using the force of intellect just using the force of secular knowledge thank god for your education thank god for your exposure but in all you're getting get authentic spiritual power Why do we need the anointing? Only the anointing can produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction. Only the anointing can produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction. Your ability cannot produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction. Only the anointing. I can tell you this with all humility. In my little work with God and in ministry. Not to brag. Forgive me if I sound arrogant. But I have seen wonders in the lives of people. I have seen God do things that are all inspiring. And I go back and I know the difference between me and the anointing. I can disconnect myself from that result and I know this one you have nothing to do with it the seed did not part for Elijah the seed parted for whoever carried that mantle it was not about Elijah it was about the career of that mantle when Elijah carried it and came and said where is the Lord God of Elijah Are you blessed this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hear me. 
God wants to give you rest. There are many of us, you are sincere people, but I bring you to a dimension where you stop doing things in the flesh. You are doing business in the flesh. You will be angry and you will hate successful people for the rest of your life. Because you will try to attract customers and even your own tribes people will leave you. It is whoever access an advantage from the realm of the spirit who exerts dominion here. Great men and women of God, it takes more than a good Bible study to have God honor you and increase you and have people come to listen to the counsel of God upon your lips and to have a generation honor and acknowledge the workings of God upon you. It takes more than that. There is a dimension of grace. An angel of the Lord is pouring oil on this lady. This lady with hands on her mouth. I'm seeing oil. And the Lord is saying he's shifting you to a new dimension in the spirit. I stretch my hands now. You step into that dimension in the spirit. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set my heart on you. So you do what you do. We need me. This season. We need me. This season. Come and watch you do. Come and do what you do. Come and do what you do. Come and lift the way you win. Come and give the way you win. Come and bless the way you bless. Come and change the way you change. Come and lift the way you live. We need the moon. This is a moment. We need the moon. I'm seeing doors in the spirit and I'm seeing doors just opening this is what I'm seeing in the spirit I'm seeing doors these are doors of destinies that have been closed this is what the Lord is showing me in the spirit I believe that some of them are here. Doors. Ancient doors. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. That's why I started singing that song. Some of these doors are doors of ministry. You have done what you know to do. You are sincere. Serving God with all your heart. But it looks like these doors do not want to open. My friend, shout Jesus as loud as you can. You, yes. I stretch my hands upon you. New dimension in the spirit. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hela shalato pranda gasu de behesia. Parosa zeke de balatu se atabaranda subata. Lord, let the doors be open. Let the doors be open. I don't know whose door this is, but in the name of Jesus, 
my God is telling me that these doors are opening. I open them prophetically by the anointing. Eight long doors that have refused to open. For some of the doors, we don't just open them, we break the doors so that they are never closed again. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. We break those doors. Help that lady. We break those doors. We are here for you. Come and what you do. We are here. Come and do. Set our hearts. Shela paruga salakata. Let's sit down. We're about to pray now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, for this session we are entering, just be sensitive. If someone is under the anointing close to you, please help them. Hallelujah. Maybe for this session, we'll just take one more. How to receive the anointing. Please pay attention. Be sensitive. How to receive the anointing. Everything receivable can be rejected. Someone at the back in this room, I just saw light. There's a lady, the power of God is coming on that person. I just saw light. I don't know who that is, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the Spirit, please, when you find that person under the anointing, please bring them out. In the name of Jesus, light by the Spirit. The Lord is bringing an end to captivity. Hear me, except God is not God. Whatever followed you and brought you here, I stand by the God whom I serve and whose I am, that it will never follow you back. It will never follow you back. It will never follow you back. Please sit down. How to receive the anointing? Number one, there are two main biblical platforms for receiving the anointing. Number one, directly from God, through an encounter or through his word. Write it down. Number one, directly from God. Through a supernatural encounter or through his word, just like we have observed. You can be imparted and you can get that anointing directly from the word. The light, remember, is the hiding place of his power. Directly from God. The wisdom, the unction that Solomon carried came directly from God through an encounter of a dream. There are impartations that I've received directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. I've shared my story with you. He was not a mortal man. Even though God has used men. But I've had encounters directly from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords himself. So you can have direct encounters. Number two. The second biblical way to receive the anointing is through impartation from the carriers of the anointing. Through impartation from the carriers. Go and buy from them that sell. The parable of the ten virgins. It is oil you are looking for. I have lamb, but it's not burning because there is no oil. And it says, go. 
if you go to the market and you are humble enough to search if you really have the currency for purchase find out those who sell it the word sell it does not mean a manipulative way it just means those who distribute it the administrators of the grace and the anointing of the spirit are we together impartation second kings 2 and verse 2 2 and verse 2 and Elisha said unto Elisha tarry here I pray thee for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel and Elisha said unto him as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth I will not leave you so they went down to Bethel next verse and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, listen carefully, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yes, I know. Hold your peace. These guys were, the next prophet should come out from them. They were in the school of the prophets. But they had gotten so familiar. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And they met a man who was a farmer had no business being part of the prophetic lineage but his hunger he recognized that elijah is not just a man and he said as far as your journey is concerned i will go with you the prophets had been trained enough to start seeing visions so they could see that he will be lifted but there was no hunger to receive there are rules for impartation listen carefully there are rules of engagement as far as impartation is concerned i think this is where a lot of sincere people especially ministers of the gospel miss it we just think because you have an encounter or contact with the career of a certain grace you have received the anointing no you think so but there are rules and i want to share some of them with you number one the first the first requirement for receiving an impartation from a vessel that carries it is discernment discernment if you can see me he was looking at him already and said no if you can see me if you discern that i'm not just a human being but i represent a spiritual system of the prophetic you will carry what you see a man can have different levels of graces the grace you discern is the grace that leads him to you it's not the grace that is on him that comes to you it's the grace that your discernment can pick a man can have the grace for prayer a grace for speed a grace for favor a grace for influence your discernment only sees the grace for influence he lays hands on you and you think everything on him came to you it is the grace you discern that came to you are we together please learn this the first rule for impartation is discernment father this is my bishop and my pastor but what is upon this man lord reveal to me by the spirit i just don't want it to be that i was invited to this church and i'm now a member of this church reveal to me the disciples thought that jesus was just joseph's son and mary's son but at the mount of transfiguration god opened their eyes to see who this jesus was and suddenly they saw his spirit man as bright as the sun and two strange entities were standing close to him moses and elijah discernment number two the second key that governs receiving impartation 
from careers of this grace is service. Write it down, please. Service. Serving God and serving that anointing with understanding. Gehazi was supposed to be the next prophet after Elisha. But even though he served, he did not serve with a pure heart. Listen, it is dangerous to come around the anointed and yet your heart is not pure. It will be better for you to go afar off because coming close to it. You see, how do I put it now? <coughs> there are ways that God deals with us. He deals with us according to our levels of spiritual exposure. That means there are things when God has brought you to, He will not accept certain mistakes again. Because you have been exposed to too much. That was the reason why Moses did not enter Canaan. There was a dimension of God he had seen to not allow that level of unbelief and anger. And God said, Moses, I love you, but this is no longer for you. It's dangerous to be around the anointed and your heart is not pure. Because the anointing was designed to fight anything that is not God. So you will be surprised that you are around an anointed vessel serving, but it's not with a pure heart. And it's the day you met that pastor, your life starts going down. And you are wondering, is it that this guy is taking my destiny? No. The impurity of your heart, the grace upon that life is fighting that impurity. It's true. Precious sense. God bless you. Um, Reflector Hub TV on this YouTube channel. We are committed to bringing you the accuracy of God's word through His servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. No matter what happens to you, if only you can pray, truly things will change. Don't forget that it's in the place of prayer we command results. Results are not commanded from the outside, but from the inside, from the secret place. Release those bullets, release those weapons, release the arsenals of prayer, and it is by the power and the hand of God that things begin to shift if only we give yield to consistent prayers don't forget everything you can talk to God about should be talked to God about don't skip anything tell him everything and see that he transforms and changes every situation maybe you are experiencing a terminal disease maybe it is whatsoever the doctor concluded that things are not going to work for you things are, are not going to get better maybe it's your house rent business is not moving marriage is not working out well take them to the place of prayer ministry is not working for you let it bring you to the place of prayer it is a time to truly pray it is a time to settle everything that god have to settle in your life in the place of prayer and it's in the pray place of prayer we involve god into everything that we do you see because in the beginning god said let there be light and there was light and see because god said that was why it came to to pass also bring that situation to the place of prayer speak over it involve god in it and see each other the bible said in all things making known your request even unto god through prayers and supplications so don't forget all things can be talked to god about his ears are open widely to hear you speak to him thus because he cares for you that's because he loves you that's because he wants to see your life change he wants to see your life blessed and also as touching being a blessing to your world god wants to also see that others tap from the blessing he has made out of your life by sharing this video you'll be a part of this mandate and you also be a blessing to many others out there by also telling them about the love of god do well to subscribe if you are a new viewer on this channel we are committed to bringing you the accuracy of god's word daily even as you hit the notification bell so as to stay notified with regards to every of our new messages uploaded on this channel god bless you keep watching reflector hub tv see you at the top we love you so much